Welcome back, everybody. I started compiling these combat tips in my first or second week with the game, so there are some tips in here that are better suited for beginners. I'll pass on a bit of everything that I've learned, and hopefully you advanced players can pick up a thing or two as well. Let's start out with combat preparedness. I won't focus on the obvious things like applying buffs, but those are certainly important. Instead, let's dive into our inventories. The default sorting method leaves something to be desired for your weapons. It's a good start, but you can take it a step further by dropping certain weapons, then sorting your inventory, and then picking those weapons up after. What we are doing is creating a fourth section in our inventory. What I include here are my beater weapons, or the ones that I don't mind breaking on any enemies, my ore smasher, my weaker elemental weapons, etc. Having them grouped close together makes finding what I need for 99% of my playtime that much easier and quicker. If I need a stronger weapon of a certain type, then I know to look in one of the three default weapon groups. Something you'll learn fairly early on is that it's almost always worth fusing monster parts to your weapons. I started out with a hoarder mentality and would typically fuse other weapons and zonai parts to my weapons, but the damage was sorely lacking. Blue and black enemy drops will soon become common for you, so don't hesitate to make a powerful weapon or two with those. Also, just view it as a profitable exchange. Let's say you're trading in one monster part to eliminate a camp of three monsters. Odds are, you'll get more of the same monster part in return. I'll take this opportunity to highlight a few of my favorite fusions. First, I highly recommend trekking through the hot and cold regions for fire and ice Lizalfos. Even a relatively inexperienced player can dispatch these enemies quickly due to their fatal weaknesses to their opposing elements. Those fire and ice Lizalfos horns are so powerful early on, and their status effects can help swing difficult battles in your favor. Next, don't always run away from stall enemies at night. Some of the strongest weapons that you can make for the majority of the game are done simply by fusing two of their drops together. How convenient that these enemies usually spawn in pairs. Suppose you're in the middle of a fight, but there's a problem. The weapons that you want to use don't have anything fused to them, or worse, you don't even have cheap weapons that you could use. You don't want to have to resort to using your strongest weapons right now. Let's solve the former problem first. There are a few ways to make time to fuse weapons mid-battle, but the one that anyone can execute is deploying a puff shroom. It doesn't have to be aimed precisely, but it will incapacitate your enemies for a comfortable amount of time. Now you can reach into your inventory, drop a monster part, and fuse it to your weapon without worry. The other scenario has you without an adequate weapon to begin with. Reach instead for something that can disarm your opponent, like a shock fruit or a dazzle fruit, then steal their weapon and go to town on them. To wrap up this video, I'll quickly go over some tips about using the environment to your advantage. You're all aware of how powerful bullet time is, but maybe you're unaware of how ubiquitous opportunities for it are. All it takes are a few strides up a tree or a cliff, maybe you can backflip or side hop off a teeny tiny elevation, or maybe you can get really creative with ascend in the middle of combat, it's up to you. If you look for bullet time opportunities, you'll start to find them everywhere. If you don't want to dirty your hands so much, then let water and steep cliffs do the work for you. Maybe you've got one of those Korok weapons, the gusters clogging up your inventory. Why not position the enemy between you and that environmental hazard and let them have it? You can also send enemies flying with bouncy weapons created by fusing mushrooms to weapons. For the best results, use a one-handed sword and quickly charge up a spin attack. This should make any coastal or riverside fight a cinch. Finally, you can achieve the same results with ice. Simply freeze the enemy, and then blow them or push them off a cliff. The only consequence of dispatching enemies in this manner is that you probably won't retrieve their drops after. The very last tip is just a reminder that rewind can be used in battle as well. Enemies like Octorox are likely to die after you rewind their projectiles back to them. Taluses, boss bokoblins, and other enemies that like to throw things will be in for nasty surprises when you launch their boulders and explosives back at them. While preparing for this video, I realized that most combats could probably be brute forced by plainly hitting the enemies over and over again. Some of these tips, like using different fruit to get out of sticky situations, might seem to be more for show than for necessity, but I hope that you'll be inspired to experiment with different tactics, or at least consider something like how to organize your weapons more effectively. I have had so much fun with combat in this game. I can't even force myself to play the game in a boring way. I'm always inspired to try new things, to find new combinations, and to discover new weaknesses to exploit. 
If you'd like to see more of that in action, then I've got a few combat clips already uploaded, and I promise they're entertaining. Now that I've published a handful of these tips videos, I'd like to record more combats, and then I should return with a couple more tips videos in the future. In particular, on Link's different abilities and on defeating specific enemies. Yes, that includes Lynels. That's all for now though, thank you to everyone for watching, and thank you to anyone who's contributed with their own tips in the comment sections of these videos. Bye for now.